right, let's discuss how to attack this Thursday night slate. These are going to be the key players you must start from this game. And we can start with Rondell Moore, who is arguably the best overall play in the slate at just $5,800. Now, there's a lot of injuries on both sides of the ball in this game, but you're going to have DeAndre Hopkins coming back, but he wasn't great last year. He's now 30 plus years old, potential rust there. You're going to have Marquise Brown be out for this game. And then you're also going to have Robbie Anderson recently acquired. If he even suits up, he won't know the full playbook. He'll probably operate as the wide receiver four, meaning that Rondell Moore is going to see a big role. But Moore has already been seeing a pretty impressive role. And let me just show you. Rondell now for three straight weeks has set new career highs in snaps at 90%, 91%, and then 97% of the snaps this past week, running a career high 40 routes last week. And it led to 10 targets. But the 10 targets only translated to 11 fantasy points. So maybe a lot of people won't be as high on him, but his usage is as good as it gets. And as you can see from my tweet on Twitter, he's going to have a nice matchup against the Saints number 17 secondary for a guy who's averaging 7.7 targets per game the last three games. Go play Ron Dale Moore. And then you also want to play a tight end from the Saints who's a really strong value. Because beautiful people, you fellas, you ladies out there, Jawan Johnson, the former wide receiver, he is now a converted tight end, is just $3,000. And the other Saints tight end, Adam Trotman, isn't expected to play in this game, and he ended up getting hurt in last week's game. This led to Jawan Johnson playing 87% of the snaps and running 29 routes. Basically his best usage of the season, it led to six targets. And that former wide receiver who's now put on weight because he's a tight end at 230 pounds is a very strong athlete. Top 10% speed of all time. He has burst, a catch radius, agility. This is a great player in between the 20s, but also because of his size in the red zone. And at just $3,000, he's hard to ignore, especially against the dead last ranked Cardinals secondary. So I would argue he's the best value on the slate, but then we can ignore that the veteran AJ Green is just $2,600 on this slate with a team total of over 23 points. Now look, AJ Green has not been good this year. He's 92nd in target rate, meaning he's only averaging a target on 14% of his routes run. You want to see this number around like 25%. And he ranks 98th in fantasy points per route run right now. Again, not efficient at all, but there's one major reason why he has to stay in play on this one game slate. And that's because the dude is still being used. Even though Hopkins is returning this week, Hollywood Brown is not going to be out there. So you could still expect his 31 routes per game to keep up, which is averaging four and a half targets per game. Pretty good at just 2,600. So again, I do side with just slightly Juwan Johnson, a more athletic younger player there, and he's going to run similar amount of routes, but this next guy is also really appealing. And it's Juwan Johnson's teammate, $7,400 Chris Olave, way too cheap on this slate. Michael Thomas, not expected to play. Jarvis Landry, not expected to play. Chris Olave should arguably be close to $10,000. He is way too cheap. The $7,000 range kicks off with him, and you want to play him. Because so far on the season, in two games with Andy Dalton, and really a game and a half because he left in the early third quarter two weeks ago, he's averaging over 16 fantasy points per game. And whether Jameis Winston makes a return, which I'm not expecting, well, he's averaging 15.6 points per game with Jameis. It doesn't matter who his quarterback is. He's getting open downfield and producing. And his usage is elite. He leads the NFL with 150 air yards per game right now, even after missing a game and a half with injury, which is just mind boggling to me. So this all boils down to play Chris Olave. He's a clear top five play on this slate. And so is this quarterback. And that would be Kyler Murray, who is currently projected for four more points than any other player on the slate on my projections in the blueprint on Patreon. Go get those, the ownership projections, the lineup optimizer, and a whole lot more. Link down below if you want to end up winning more in DFS and fantasy. Now for Murray to be projected for four more points than any other play in the slate and not be above like $12,000 is really impressive here. He's by far the best payup option and he's actually averaging seven and a half points per game on the ground alone the last three weeks. He went for 100 yards last week. And now he gets to face a banged up Saints defense that might be down Marshawn Lattimore again. Their defensive line has been banged up and they only rank 21st in pass rush, which is going to allow Kyler Murray to have some time to throw. And this might surprise you, but I actually took Kyler under his passing yards this week. I actually like him to get there in fantasy because of his legs. So I take his under passing yards. And if you want to take this with a free bet up to $100 on prizepicks.com, click the link in the description to learn more. Use the code SAL22 and you get that free bet up to hundred bucks. If you're somebody who bets or plays fantasy, use it or lose it. Not now, but right now. So Kyler's going to be in play. He's expensive. So can we find some more values other than the guys we already talked about? Well, one of those potential values who will definitely be lower owned is going to be $4,800 Marquez Callaway, who is likely to start again because Michael Thomas isn't expected to play. And this has been the case the last three weeks for Callaway. He's played 100% of the snaps and then 83% of the snaps in back-to-back -back weeks, seeing a season high this past week, 32 routes run in seven targets. I mean, this is solid usage. The problem is this only led to like three catches for 36 yards because he's not that efficient. He's not great at getting open overall. He's a very raw prospect, but he's also an athlete. He has well above average burst. He has decent speed and he has solid size. So on this slate, when he's going to be lower owned than just $4,800 for a guy who might see another seven target game, he's got to be in play. Now the running backs for Arizona are interesting. Daryl Williams expected to miss again. James Conner is day to day. We'll see if he plays either way. Let's talk about, you know, Benjamin. So if Conner plays, you're not playing Benjamin, but even at $8,200, if Conner's doesn't play, Benjamin is still expensive. 
impressive going up against a borderline top 10 run defense in the New Orleans Saints. But the usage last week was encouraging. Let's discuss. In week six against Seattle, he plays an impressive 87% of the snaps, 15 carries, and he ends up seeing three targets. So 18 total touches, but he wasn't efficient, just 65 yards. But that usage is really good. The problem is he's really never been all that efficient when giving a big sample. On a couple of touches this year before last week, he was efficient, but whenever he gets a lot of touches last year, so far this year, or in the preseason, he hasn't been efficient. So he's an okay play at $8,200 if there's no James Conner, but I actually like this quarterback more. And that would be Andy Dalton, who, yeah, he's a laughing stock when he was with the Bears last year, but what do you know? He's actually in a better situation with an offensive line that can block for him, and he looks good. And the interesting thing, he's 9400 the only $9,000 player on the slate, and if Conner doesn't play, there's basically no one else in his pricing, which makes him a pretty easy play to get to. And when I said he's been good this year, he has been. He's sixth in accuracy rating. He's 11th in adjusted yards per attempt, which is quarterback efficiency. He's been pretty solid. And now he has the fifth best pass blocking advantage of the week, 17% above the league average, as you can see right here, which means he's going to have time to throw. Like we discussed with Juwan Johnson, they're facing the number 32 dead last ranked Cardinal secondary. I like Dalton. And I also really like $7,000 Zach Ertz. This 7K range, at least specifically Chris Olave and Zach Ertz, are fantastic options. Because Ertz leads all tight ends still in slot usage, and he's running 38 routes per game. I mean, when you factor in wide receivers, this is still top five usage in the NFL, and it's leading to the red zone, the cheat code targets. Red zone targets, number three overall with 11, and deep targets, number six overall with four of those. This is great usage. The translation comes play Zach Ertz, and Zach Ertz and Alave are two top five plays both in the 7K range. According to the blueprint on Patreon, get it down below to win more. So my favorite payup option is Kyler Murray, but if you can afford, because we have some value, both Kyler Murray and Alvin Kamara, try and do it because Kamara has been looking good. In this specific matchup, it's going to be a good one. The Cardinals rank 26th against the run, and Kamara has now seen 25 plus touches when you factor in his receptions in back-to-back -back weeks. And in two weeks with Andy Dalton, 15 targets and 12 catches. This is Andy Dalton's MO. He likes to check it down, and Kamara is one of the best, if not the best, pass-catching running backs in the league. He's averaged over 150 yards per game with Andy Dalton last two games, so I like him a lot. It's just, can you afford him with Kyler? I prefer Kyler. But because of how much usage Kamara is getting, I don't like Mark Ingram. I took his under 26 and a half on prize picks. Again, use that code SAL22, link in the description for a free bet up to $100. Not now, but right now. So out of all these pay-up options above $9,000, I like Dalton. I like Kamara. I like Murray, but I don't like DeAndre Hopkins at $10,200. Look, he's coming off a six-game suspension. It's not an injury, but let's not forget, he's over 30 years old now, and last year, he wasn't all that great. He earned a target on just 22% of his routes, 48th in the NFL, and he only had in 10 games 96 yards after the catch, outside the top 100 in the NFL. This is not good. He was starting to kind of regress last year and not look all that good, and you know, he's not 27-year-old prime Hopkins anymore. He's 30 and a half years old. Now, Hopkins is one of those players who does show up in prime time, and if Marshawn Lattimore is out, it's a much better situation, but I prefer the other payup options more. Now, another guy who's just a weird price point to me is $6,200 Traquan Smith. I don't get this one at all. Jarvis Landry isn't expected to play, so Traquan will start again as he has the last two games when he's ran 22 routes and 26 routes. That's okay usage, but it's only led to seven targets out of the slot, none of them being downfield. Now, when you're looking at the game logs, you'll see Traquan scored 13 points last week. Let's plug him in. No, he only scored that because he found a touchdown. He is a touchdown or bust player at this price point. He's just too expensive. Now, this next guy's not expensive at just $400, but it's Keontae Ingram, the six-round rookie. He can't be in play. Even if James Conner misses last week when there was no Conner, he only played 13% of the snaps, saw just three carries for seven yards. The Cardinals don't actually like this dude. They were down three running backs last week, not just Conner and Darrell Williams, but also Jonathan Ward, who would have played ahead of Keontae Ingram, the rookie. They didn't like him in the preseason. There's a lot of negative reports coming out about him. If indeed Conner is out, just expect him not to see a lot of usage. And now that Chris Olave is returning, another Saints wide receiver who has been seeing some usage isn't going to be viable. And that's $800 Keith Kirkwood. Again, when you see the usage, you might say, oh, I want to play him. He ran 21 routes. He played 79% of the snaps last week. Saw just one target. But with Olave back, he's going to take a back seat and barely be on the field. Don't play him. So when we start to look at this, the guys below $3,000, it's really just AJ Green. Like Rashid Shahid had a really nice play last week, but not a lot of usage. Adam Trotman's expected to miss. And then there's no other options here. So your value options are going to be one, Jawan Johnson and AJ Green. Greg Dorch is there, but expect him to operate as the wide receiver five if Robbie Anderson and plays wide receiver four maybe runs three or five routes if there's no Robbie in this game now we got to talk about a guy who I'm sure I'll get some questions on but he's the most overpriced play in the sleep and that would be $7,200 Taysom Hill who is somehow the same price as Chris Olave and Zach Ertz they are way better plays than this dude you see Taysom Hill last week sees absolutely no targets he runs just four routes he sees a couple of quarterback attempts and a couple of carries if you're gonna get two carries and three passing attempts that's not worth over seven thousand dollars and like I said Andy Dalton has been good so they're not gonna take him off the field all that much for Taysom Hill and don't expect expect Taysom Hill's five rushing attempts to go for three touchdowns again. Now, if you want to have the blueprint to this slate, you can get it down below on Patreon. It gets you the projections, the ownerships, the best plays. The leverage plays is how you win at fantasy showdowns or main slates. It is through leverage. Guys who are lower owned than they should be based on their projection. 
That is what the blueprint on Patreon does and a whole lot more. It helps you win more. Get it. Join the thousands of other people using it right now with the link in the description below. If, if of course, you want to actually win more. Now, Robbie Anderson, if he plays again, I think he'll be the wide receiver four. He only has like a day to really learn the playbook. So I don't think he'll actually suit up. If he does, he'll be really limited. He's not somebody I'm playing at his price point. And as we mentioned, you have those values in your Juwan Johnsons and AJ Greens. You're also going to have natural value at defense and kicker. I prefer both of the kickers in this game. If Matt Prater does indeed play, we have to see who's the starting kicker for Arizona. I'll prefer him either way though the kickers are better than the defenses here but I would prefer Juwan Johnson and even AJ Green if I had to choose so these are the guys you must have and some of the guys you want to avoid on this slate it is going to be a lovely lovely slate based on the pricing and if you want to win more again check out patreon link down below and if you're not already hit the subscribe button on this new DFS channel